The way we consume and share news today, it is largely rooted in social media outlets. A reason why it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online, from the hottest issues to trends for our daily social media. And we're joined by Erica. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Happy Art Week. Yes, uh, it, it's it's buzzing. Have you have you been? I went yesterday. Nice. And I'll talk about it in just a moment uh-huh. because I think headlines are very misleading. It is crowded. Yeah, <laughs> like super crowded. I, I've seen photos. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, circumstances are slightly better, they say, than mm. last year. But it doesn't mean the buzz is dying or it's really orderly. It's it's. There's a lot of people there. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> You're right, which is a good thing. It means that art world is still thriving and Soul City is still very relevant. Yeah, I'm glad that you went because uh, I might have some questions for you. I'm curious. I'm not quite sure if I can answer all of them, but I'll try. Okay. So so this is this week is Art Week, and this means that galleries and exhibitions yeah. stay open a little bit longer, and it's rooted in Free Soul, the second edition, and also Kia. That's right, the second edition of Free Soul and the twenty second edition of the Korea International Art Fair, or simply Kia, uh, is taking place at the same time on different floors of the Coex Convention Center in Gangnam uh, from September sixth, yesterday. Mm-hmm through the ninth. Now, um, there have been reports of a dip in the South Korean art market. You know, it sort of cast mm. a shadow on the run-up to Seoul Art Week. Uh, nonetheless, uh, crowds gathered and their, you know, impulse to spend <laughs> money on art seemed to be mostly undeterred. Would you agree? I agree. Hold okay. On, agree. But I mean, I, I, I'm not the one with the spreadsheets and I'm not the one making the deals. Mm. But as far as crowds go, I don't really see a difference between okay. last year's crowd on the first day and this year's crowd on the first day. I mean, day. because multiple gallerists at both fairs mm. reported better VIP day sales ah. this year than last. Okay, so the, the tricky part is mm. yesterday was a VIP opening yes. and press was also invited and uh, it's different, I suppose, how much they make on a VIP day mm. and the rest of the remaining Correct. art week. So we'll have to wait and see what it amounts to. Mm. But keep in mind, <laughs> last year and the year before, our spending habits were a little bit different. That's right. I mean, We during- were still in the midst of the COVID pandemic? Exactly. Yep. I mean, travel was out, which means we would rather spend locally. And if our fares came to town, yep. we might be more inclined to pay attention. That's right. Okay. In case you're, you weren't keeping up, that's okay. We'll tell you <laughs> all about Freeze. Uh, how many galleries are taking part this year? Uh, 121 galleries are taking part in the fair, which is around 10 more mm. compared to the first edition of Free Soul last year. Mm. Um, things, I don't know, on the surface seem to be a little bit more calm <laughs> on because large crowds, they came, they gathered. <laughs> And then they dispersed. <laughs> so at different periods throughout the day, mm. you know, the crowds were larger, mm. you know, you know, at certain moments, the crowds thinned out. Yeah. But that's how art fairs are. Yeah, you're right. And to be fair, it's because my personal bubble yeah. is like twice the size of a normal personal <laughs> yeah. bubble. So that that's just me trying to gauge how mm. big this event was. But to be fair, this year, they try to implement this new system where they give you a time slot. Yep. You enter at a certain time and you're expected to leave by a certain time. They don't force you out. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I mean, there's an average time any one of us can spend sure. at this massive exhibit. Right. But anyway, they say because people weren't rushing in at once, yeah. it was more orderly. Exactly. The most noticeable shift from uh, 2022 is a return of Chinese collectors. You're right. Yep. I, I heard a lot of Chinese. That's of right. Of course, a lot of English. Yeah. I mean, the Chinese, they could not travel mm. uh, last year. They couldn't attend free skiaf uh, due to COVID travel restrictions. Uh, you know, Chinese institutions at attendance including Include Hong Kong's M Plus mm. and the Ping Shan Art Museum mm. in Shenzhen. Mandarin, like you mentioned, mm. uh, could be heard at many <laughs> booths, <laughs> according to news reports. Uh, ethnic Chinese people from Taiwan, Hong mm. Kong, and Southeast Asia were also part of this mix. Mm. 
Um, and uh, the mainland art contingent is attending in force. I mean, keep in mind, like, Kiev is a local festival. Freeze, Freeze is a massive international right. one. So for us to sustain people from coming uh-huh. in, I think that seems to be important for Freeze to keep going. Uh, any big notable <laughs> sales from opening day? Yeah, you know, at the top uh, end of sales yesterday at Free Soul, we have Hauser and Worth. They've placed a 2023 Rashid Johnson painting mm. with a private Asian collection for 975,000 US dollars. Lison Gallery has sold a 2004 Stanley Whitney painting for $550,000. Uh, today is Ropac, which is uh, which this month double the size mm. of its Seoul Gallery sold uh, a 2023 Mother of Pearl work <sighs> to a private Japanese collector for $190,000. Two Daniel Richter paintings mm. uh, for each costing $402,000 have been sold, one to a Chinese collector mm. and one to a local Korean collector. Uh, no works in the seven figures were mm. reported uh, to have sold by the end of VIP Day, mm. although last year a handful of galleries made sales of works for more than $1 million on the second day of the fair. So we'll have to see how the second yeah. day of the fair <laughs> goes. It's not just, VIPs don't always come on the first day. They come dispersed too. Mm-hmm. And it's actually really fun people watching Yeah, the celebrities I saw. And it's not just the first day they come through the entire to the week. Yeah, you're right and sometimes the, the most famous one want to be discreet yeah. so you would have no idea right <laughs> so look up not just <laughs> the paintings but people too uh, what about downstairs at Kia you know sales and crowds appear to be a little bit more sedate compared mm. to freeze um, you know, that that's always been the question since, you know, the first edition when these two major art fairs took place concurrently in the mm, same space, mm, you know, mm. would uh, Kiaf be overshadowed uh. by Freeze? Um, anyways, this year, Kiaf has significantly increased the number of galleries taking part by around 33% okay. uh, with more than 210 exhibitors made up of mostly Korean galleries, mm. uh, including some of its largest galleries, mm. including Kukje. Mm. Uh, responsible for a number of the most expensive reported VIP day sales, including uh, sculptures by Ugo Rondinone for between $50,000 and $90,000. It's so wonderful being able to see it up close. Yeah. It's so exciting. And uh, galleries like Hukche have a booth both at Kiev and Freeze. And the paintings that they bring out, the sculptures that bring out a little bit different. Mm-hmm. So it's, maybe it's worth visiting both. Yeah. It's right there, literally, <laughs> like on top of each other. That's right. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because uh, last year I didn't know it was a freeze. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was there too. But there's a lot of um, collectibles beyond just artwork. I mean, there are first editions of really important books like The Little Prince, for yep. example. And that's really cool. And, you know, pieces from Florence that dates back uh, hundreds yeah. and hundreds of years. And I, I really legitimately had to ask, is this really for sale? <laughs> are you really selling yep. this? It is. Is it my like responsibility mm. to guard it with my life? <laughs> it, it feels like a more like an archaeological discovery mm-hmm. less like art but right hey right <laughs> something totally for everyone I mean. <laughs> yeah so you know head out there guys it's art week in seoul and Save the weather's getting so so it's nicer it's cooler it's sl- dare, yeah. dare i say cooler <laughs> yeah mingle with the crowd uh, yeah marvel at all the artwork and i really encourage people to ask questions it's okay because i remember my That's first really year point. going to kiosk and it was so intimidating mm-hmm. i was like can i yeah. ask how much it is you can <laughs> you absolutely yep. can and you can ask even silly questions and most of them will be glad to answer there are snooty ones it's all right <laughs> <laughs> all right on to our second story today exhibition in seoul to showcase the latest recycling Cycling technologies. That sounds really cool. Yeah, I know. You know, these kind of stories really grab my attention because uh, we have uh, student projects at school that, you know, you know, students uh, doing recycling projects are creating apps to uh, create a circular, you know, economy mm. and uh, upcycling and all that kind of stuff. Yep. We're really into that stuff. And uh, this time, Seoul City Government is hosting a one-day exhibition today uh, that showcases Korea's latest recycling technologies. Um, and on the side Sidelines of the exhibition, something fun for visitors. Mm. If you bring your own tumbler, uh, there's going to be a special event for you uh, later on. Now, this one-day event at Seoul. 
Plaza uh, features around 40 booths uh, by some 20 companies. Uh, there are social enterprises, cooperatives specializing in recycling and upcycling. Uh, for example, in one section, visitors can find robots mm. that separate waste um, based on the material. You're kidding. Yeah. So I don't have to divvy up the work. No. Ah. It's the robots doing the work. <laughs> uh, visitors will be introduced to a heating method uh, that uh, it's super high tech, apparently, that dismantles biopolymers, uh, see the latest products made with coffee grounds okay. and used, uh, you know, plastic bottles. Uh, another program offered at the exhibition by a scrap metal mm. Recycling Center in Seoul's Songbuku District will give visitors a chance to make their own magnets using trashed keyboards, old computer keyboards. You're kidding. Yeah. Wait, how do you, you, you crush <laughs> it? I, I'd imagine, right? Oh, okay. So trash keyboards being You will definitely have to pull apart the keyboard. Okay. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, as you mentioned earlier, they're showcasing new recycling technologies right. like the robot, for example. Yeah. Um, so new gadgets will be on display. Uh, these gadgets include an AI-run multi-use cup dispenser, a table made out of uh, dumped vehicles and a chair created with waste cardboard boxes. I can't even, even imagine what this process looks like. Yeah, and if you're there, if you happen to be at Seoul Plaza, look out for this one installation. It's supposed to be sort of like artwork slash, I don't know, it's supposed to be a plastic monster, basically. When you put it side by side with freeze, it kind of um, I know, right? <laughs> pales thin, but hey. <laughs> right, so this plastic monster has been made with 100 two plastic cups, okay. uh, 568 plastic containers used for food delivery, mm. uh, 109 plastic bottles mm. for drinking water, and 500 more than 500 plastic bags. And uh, these figures represent the average plastic footprint uh. by an individual Korean in 2020, according to a 2023 report by Greenpeace Korea. So it's a different kind of thinker, yep. this art piece. I mean, it's one thing to give you the numbers and say an average Korean and uses 102 yes, plastic right. cups a year and 568 plastic containers. Mm -hmm. uh, but to see it in visualization right in front of you as this plastic monster or something else. Yeah. So did you know that yesterday was National Recycling Day? I didn't even know we had it. <laughs> My apologies. Yes. Yeah, so to mark this event, there's going to be a special cafe. So if you're a visitor and you bring your own tumbler, you get free coffee oh. or other beverages. <laughs> and uh, visitors who leave a note at this uh, open cafe uh, the note containing reminders mm. to other visitors to stop using disposable cups. Mm. You can receive one of the 500 mini size flower pot giveaways, <laughs> courtesy of uh, Soul City. All right. So come in with your tumbler, get free drinks, leave a note, and take away yeah. a mini size potted flower. Uh, the, lovely. I know. And the exhibit runs until 5 p.m. Okay. So it's definitely more events in Soul City if you're still in town, Absolutely. folks. Uh, before we let you go, Yerika, we have one last time. Uh, mm -hmm story for our listeners. Of course, the war in Ukraine rages on as we speak. And the thing is, sometimes we forget because if we just look at the major headlines, we think life is completely disrupted mm. and destroyed. Yes, to a certain extent, but life also goes on. A car key subways are now classrooms as school apparently starts running under Russian attacks. And of course, how is the big question? Yeah, so schools have opened up, actually, okay. in uh, the city, uh, in the sprawling subway system, mm -hmm. uh, no less. And according to UNICEF, more than 1,300 schools in the areas controlled by uh, the Ukrainian government have been destroyed since the start of the invasion uh, last year in February. Uh, there have been profound learning loss among Ukrainian children, you know, after their safe havens mm. were destroyed. Mm. Um, in Kharkiv, there were launch and impact of missiles from Russian soil. Um, and, uh, you know, basically, let's imagine the school underground. There are no windows, no sunlight whatsoever. And uh, these are makeshift schools. Uh, the setting may be unfamiliar to most of us, yeah. but uh, the typical first day rituals played out all morning. So, you know, students, they, they, they were dressed, you know, to the nines and they had their little backpacks on. And, you know, the parents looked visibly emotional mm -hmm. from the photos that I've seen on the news. The teachers looked excited as well, because this is something that 
they haven't been a part of for the last 18 months since the war started. I mean, classes did uh, unfold in uh, uh, online classrooms, for example. But a lot of the parents, they can no longer afford to pay for, you know... uh, Internet connections, yeah, internet connections, laptops, exactly, cameras. Like that. Yeah. Okay, so it, it kind of looked like the first day of mm. school. Um, like you said, the classrooms look entirely different. But we must, we must uh, continue to, as pours, talk about the daily lives, even as the war rages on again. It's 18 months. That's right. And these students have been under extreme stress. They need counseling. And the counsel- counselors were actually on standby okay. um, at the school. They try to make the school interior, I, I school, um, as cheery as possible. There were lots of colors. Posters. Yeah, posters. Okay. The desks were bright green. <sighs> The kids looked really happy and parents, they're relieved that their kids can finally go to school go and to hang school. out with their friends, which should be part yep. of their childhood. Yep. Uh, sometimes we forget to pay attention to the details of yep. what what destruction of war, how it affects mm. uh, children on a day to day basis. And teachers really, really pulling yeah. the big guns to ensure that these students feel safe That's and right. included. And I think counseling, like you said, might yep. be an important step to That's do right. that, too. Um, the children are not allowed to go outside for recess. No, they're not allowed to go outside. Okay. But at least they are trying to create a safer classroom yep. underground. After school, they do have to go outside to go to go home. And there are sirens ringing uh, everywhere. Oh, my. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much, Erica, for today's coverage. Mm-hmm. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.